Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about the most expensive mythics according to Star City Games pre-order. It's always nice to have screenshots of the pre-orders so you know how much that you got ripped off or how much Star City Games wanted to rip you off with these hyped cards. Now many of you will say, oh, no one buys cards at this price. Well, a few of them are actually sold out as we will see today. Um, beyond the fact that you should never, almost never pre-order a card if you can wait, especially in modern when it is a established format, these cards are not going into standard. When it is a established format and there are so certain decks that do really well and certain decks that don't. I understand the EDH appeal and that's a separate issue, but I'm going to talk about modern as a standalone. A lot of these cards seem okay, but they will not be playable at all in Modern. Maybe they're in a Tier 2 deck, a Tier 3 deck, a Tier 4 deck. But outside of very few of these Mythics that we're going to see will be playable. Now, the price of a booster pack, according to the online, which is the only information we have on, on MSRP. Remember, MSRP does not exist anymore for Magic products. Kind of strange, but that's what they decided. It is six ninety nine at six ninety nine a pack? Retail stores are buying this for four dollars and two cents. Is the price that I was offered uh, four dollars and two cents times thirty six packs a box? There's not anything special about these packs when you compare it to the nine ninety nine or the twelve ninety nine packs that we have at Walmart. The other master packs. So beyond the core problem that the packs are cheaper, hence the cards in it should be cheaper as well, but they're putting these cards, every Mythic is $30, $40 right now, $45. You also have print to demand. None of the Master sets, no matter how mu funny we think it is that they reprinted Iconic Masters when no one wanted that reprint, None of them were unlimited print runs. This is a unlimited print run. Let me explain what that means to you. As long as people buy it, they will sell it. That means there is no $25 for Ranger Captain of EOS. I see this card as a $10 card. I see a lot of these cards at $10 cards, best case scenario. And you have to consider, I mean, one of the things that you have to really think about is these cards are not in standard. It reminds me of a slightly better and therefore twice as expensive Conspiracy Take the Crown. You don't, you have a lot of supply, a lot of potential supply, and any demand that you have for the product will be alleviated by additional supply which is different from the previous master sets. That being said, I think a lot of these cards are great. I don't think that they can compete with today's card. Like, Sarah, JST Mind Sculptor is a semi-okay card. He's not even played in every single blue deck right now in Modern. And he's way stronger than Sarah. And that's the standard for four mana Planeswalkers. Uh, the standard has been set incredibly high by Tomagoyf and Lily and just different types of decks. Death Shadow, Arc Light Phoenix, which ironically is played more modern right now than it is in standard. You have very fast decks like Sword of Sinew and Steel for $35, does that make sense? No. If you calculate the expected value of a set, you don't get to these prices. You get maybe to half of these prices or even 40% uh, is what I calculated. Therefore, Star City Games is just going off hype. And I find that, I don't know, because yes, you get the card early, but no, it's not going to be a great card for you. So my point is, no one should be pre-ordering these cards. Now, if you have like a favorite speculation and $100 to throw at it, yeah, it would be entertainment value. 
but it's no better than going to a casino and gambling, right? Like, time and time again, when you look at Magic Cards, there are factors you have no control over. Does it get reprinted in a future set? Does it get banned? Does a card that it needs to be in standard get banned? There's so many different scenarios where you have problems with these cards. And the problems are like the first sliver, $45. I know it's a good sliver. But is it as good as the one in the core set, which is older and about $20 now? I don't think so. I like Cascade, but the time you play this card out, you need it to alpha strike. Ideally, I mean, even if you didn't have any slivers, it would. I understand that it seems like it would be wonderful, but they're just going to board remove the next turn. So, what do you really gain from this? Unless it's in some type of alpha attack, and there's so many better cards. Even overrun, depending on the number of creatures, might be better than throwing this as your last attack. Unbound Flourishing. Is this card really that much better? Like, it's very limited. It's not doubling season. So why are they charging the same price as double? I know doubling season re recently went up. It doesn't make sense. There are cheaper variants of this card. And the only reason this card is selling for $40, and it did sell, I think, 31 copies already, is because people are impatient and they don't do not buy from Star City Games right now. Maybe later they come up with more reasonable prices, but these prices based on a $6.99 pack that has an unlimited print run cannot be sustained. They're not reasonable, they don't make any sense, and at the very end of the day, you're going to get hosed. Uh, let's say you pay $160 for a playset. This card is maybe ten dollars. Urza, I know a lot of you. Urza is sold out at forty. I know a lot of you are saying this is a very powerful card, and I read it multiple times, and I think it's pretty good. It costs as much as Jace, the Mind Sculptor. Like I can't think of too many scenarios outside of a artifact theme deck, which also splashes for blue, so it's not the affinity type of deck that I would think it's super aggro that wants to finish you off by turn four that's going to wait around and you're going to play heavy spells later very expensive spells that you don't want in your hand the issue here is you're in modern so the power level is much higher in modern so the cards have to be graded in modern now EDH is a separate issue and you know EDH appeal is something like uh, for instance uh, the type card in white I think from one of the Ravnica sets. I didn't realize that was a $10 card. But it's a $10 card because of ed Like Ren and 6. No reason this should be a $40 card. And the reason I screenshot this and make the video. It's interesting right. It's interesting to me. How gullible some people are. And in a few months from now. We're going to all look at the price and be like. Hmm, 31 people paid $40 for a seven dollar planeswalker that was not a good utility of money forty dollars forty some people may have bought a play set for a hundred and eighty dollars 160 dollars hmm probably not a good use of your money now money is not always you know money is meant to be spent and enjoyed so if you have a spec and you want to put money down in it then be my guest but it's enjoyment Right? No one goes to a casino and treats it as a job. I know Phil Ivey and then people like Tom Dwan. And this is not the same. It's like no one goes to the casino, plays slots, and expects to make an income from it, a steady income. The house always wins. Star City Games, in this case, is a house. They pay people to promote it and spike up the prices and then some... Goable lemmings buy at these prices and they get hosed later and then they repeat it. These prices are so unreasonable for what the set is worth. Uh, $6.99, unlimited print run. You should not, 
not every mythic is $40. Not every mythic is $35. This mythic is not is out of stock at $35. They just reprint more. Like what's the solution? They're going to print more. Is it really worth for you to pay 5 to 10 times more just so you can have the card delivered a week after release? Hi guys.